Finally part 8 Sorry for the wait. Chapter 14. The Battle Against the Church. Issei vs. Irina and Xenovia. Penemu. That's my name. The woman clarified, fixing her hair. Are you a delivery man? Huh. Issei rubbed at his hair in great surprise. How did you know? That's why. Penemu pointed to the pamphlet, making Issei look at her with even more surprise. Does that mean you know about demons? Issei whispered. Something like that. The beautiful woman commented, looking to her sides as if she was looking for something or someone. I know someone who likes to do business with demons. Issei looked at her slightly intrigued by her words. Well, at least it was like that before. When he was 25, he hired female devils to learn how to control his lust. Hey, is that a guy with blonde bangs by any chance? Issei would point to her hair, to emphasize her words. Penemu fixed her gaze on Issei and grabbed him strongly by the shoulders, taking him completely off guard. Where is he staying? Peaceful. Issei raised his hands in defense. Actually, I was on my way to his apartment. You can come with me if you want. Issei commented with a nervous smile. Okay. Penemu released him, then lowered his head a little. Thank you. Line jump. Issei would knock on the door of the apartment, to be answered by the subject almost instantly. You're right on time like always, brat. She commented, the half-open door revealed a little of her face and the fishing rods that she carried in one of her hands. Hmm. Azazel looked to Issei's side, seeing a woman slightly taller than him with a scowl. Keeping her calm expression, Azazel slammed the door shut without saying a word. A confused eye lashed Issei. Without being able to even move away, Penemu kicked the door open, making Issei's eyes widen. How how much strength! exclaimed the chestnut with a strange pose. Penemu brushed past Issei with furious steps. Azazel, you son of a bitch! Penemu yelled, grabbing him by the shukata with great force. Uh, Issei's mind exploded trying to figure out what was happening right now. Relax, you look like a girl. Azazel commented with great calm as he raised both hands in defense. I look like a little girl. Penemu rant with clear anger. Says the idiot who left a pile of documents and unsolved tasks for the twelfth time again. Penemu began to shake him a bit, although the now recognized Azazel didn't seem to be affected. I'm not going to do your homework again. You're coming with me, now. Penemu stopped shaking him and brought his face closer to his, glaring at him. Did you hear me? Hmm. Azazel stopped cleaning his ear, giving her a passive look. Did you say something? Penemu's eyes glittered dangerously. Damned. Realizing that Penemu intended to hit her, her gaze turned serious for the first time so far. Wait. Don't do anything stupid. Hearing Azazel's unusual response, Penemu was visibly shocked. Understood. Azazel shifted his gaze for a second towards Issei, causing Penemu to look sideways at him. Penemu would finally sigh, and leave Azazel. Which is the work? It's a very interesting one. Azazel waved his shukata to make up for the earlier shaking. I'd love to explain, but it's better if we talk about it in private another day. Penemu looked at Issei for a second, causing the brunette to give her a confused look. Very good. He finally responded. But I'll settle here to make sure you do what you're supposed to do. He finished, with eyes that indicated a lot of pain if she ran away again. Okay. Azazel replied, completely ignoring his death glare. Now, I'll go with the brat to fish. Azazel hugged Issei by the shoulder, as if he was the best friend of his all his life. In the meantime, you can fix the door for me. Penemu crossed her, arms and spat on the ground. Fuck you. Azazel laughed at the woman's attitude. Oh, I like you too. Line jump. Thank you for joining me this week. Azazel commented, sitting very comfortably as he waited for a fish to bite. No problem. That's what you're calling me for. Issei replied with a small smile. Speaking of which, Azazel gave him a sidelong glance. You haven't heard of us before, have you? Issei looked at him in confusion at the question. No, why do you say so? Are they some kind of big company, oh something like that? The chestnut asked with a raised eyebrow. Something like that, Azazel replied seeming to be even more relaxed seeing that Issei had no idea of his identity. I am the boss, and Penemu is my secretary. As there is always a lot of work, there are days when I decide to take a vacation. I see, Issei answered, to then put on a look that gave off suspicion. He looks like a slacker, 
Issei blinked as a realization hit him. Wait a second. Hum. Azazel looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Why did you come to Kuo? The brunette asked, rubbing his hair. There are many vacation spots around the world, and this is far from being one of them. I'm not here by chance. Azazel's answer along with her mysterious look left Issei with thousands of questions. Oh. You hooked one. Azazel exclaimed, making the brunette pay attention and catch the fish, although he fell into the water as a result of his distraction. Line jump. Issei would appear through a purple magic circle in Tiamat's cave. The brunette had a bored look while he had both hands on the back of his neck. That guy is a bummer sometimes. Always so mysterious. Issei commented to no one in particular. Who are you talking about? Diedrag's voice echoed in the small cave. If you didn't sleep all day when I'm not training, you would know. Issei glared at the gauntlet after his words. Diedrag cleared his throat. Sorry, mate. Human life doesn't appeal to me in the slightest. Pipe quote. Me lo imaginava. But if you tell me his name, maybe I can remember him. Wait. Issei rubbed his chin as he left the cave. I'm sure that woman had said her name, but I don't remember because of the bizarre situation. Issei stopped short and widened his eyes when he saw that Tiamat was outside the cave. He could not formulate a word, he could only observe. Tiamat was doing some training, visualizing an opponent in front of her. His arms and legs moved at an impressive rate, along with his chest and hips that made splendid movements. His eyes focused and completely immersed in his imaginary opponent made the slight sweat that ran down his face give it an incredibly beautiful reflection. Issei had never had the chance to see her like this, and right now he was really happy to be able to witness his master's training routine. Incredible. It was the only thing Issei could say without being able to take his eyes off her. Especially from her face, since she looked really attractive right now. Tiamat extended her hand once more upon hearing the chestnut's voice. Issei. Tiamat asked, regarding him with mild surprise. I thought you would take the day off today. The dragon concluded turning around completely and wiping the sweat from her face, smoothing her long hair in the process. She didn't realize that she added to her attractiveness when she did. Oh yeah, exclaimed Issei, in a poor attempt to respond. Tiamat looked at him with slight confusion, causing the brown-haired man to look away from such a cute expression on the dragon's face. It's my day off, and that's why I thought of asking you out. You're sure? The dragon asked, bringing both hands to her hips. I'm delighted, but I don't want you to be overwhelmed by my presence. After all, we see each other every day. What? I would never get tired of seeing you. A small blush decorated the dragon's face after hearing those words. Wouldn't you like to go see another movie? Issei extended her hand. Tiamat put her hand to her chest. She seemed to be thinking whether to accept or not. Matsuda and Motohama will be free today. You could meet them once and for all. She finished the brunette with a huge toothy smile. Tiamat remained silent for a few seconds with her typical serious expression, until she finally smiled. All right. The dragon took Issei's hand with great affection. That affection was answered by Issei with an even more radiant smile. Just when they had closed the plans, something happened. Huh Akino. Issei put his free hand to his ear. Issei. We need you to come now. We found the location of the exorcists. They are with Kiba in a restaurant. Kaneko will give you the address on her cell phone. Okay. Issei nodded seriously. I'm going right now. The call was cut off, leaving Issei a bit flustered as he saw a hint of disappointment in Tiamat's gaze. I promise that when all this is over, I'll take you wherever you want. He exclaimed with great conviction, denoting a smile so centered and accurate that it combined perfectly with his words. Don't worry. Tiamat gave him a light squeeze in his tender grip. Just be careful, and if you need any help, feel free to call me, okay? I promise. The brunette gave him a thumbs up with a toothy smile, as he disappeared with a light blue magic circle courtesy of Tiamat. When she was finally left alone, the dragon couldn't help but think of Issei's smile. Oh rather, the numerous smiles from her. She raised both hands to her chest and a loving smile graced her face. I no longer have any doubts. His smile is what I like the most about him. Line jump. I hope I arrived on time. Issei came running, stopping in front of his companions. Yeah. Kaneko replied simply. They haven't left yet. How about we go now, before Kiba makes some mess? 
Akino asked with his typical smile. Okay. Issei nodded, being joined by the other three. I suppose the president already knows, he commented, before entering the premises. That's how it is. Akino nodded. He didn't come, because he wants to decide what to do with Sona. So, I guess we're just here to get a bit of information, Issei concluded, looking at the two hooded women seriously. Even so, it didn't take long for her gaze to turn to Kiba. She had many things to ask him. We can sit, Akino asked, with his typical condescending smile. More demons, the woman who could see her little green bangs sighed. Okay, I want to set the record straight from now on. I don't think I can do it with this blonde devil here, since he doesn't listen to reason. Very good. Issei sat down next to Kiba, giving him a sidelong glance. The blonde hardly cared about the intrusion, he only had one thing on his mind. Oh rather, a goal. We want to know how many holy swords Kokobiel has in his possession. Kaneko spoke with the typical utter apathy of him. Why should I answer them? The woman with the green bangs spoke again. This is a matter of the church, the devils must not meddle in what does not concern them. Do I need to remind you that this is our mistress's territory? Asia asked with a somewhat fake smile on her face. Asia Argento. The other girl finally spoke, with a rather cheerful and fiery tone, unlike her classmate. You are a nun who became a heretic and transformed into a reincarnated devil. The girl spoke with total naturalness, without noticing that this was a delicate subject, oh that's how Issei saw it. Don't you regret your sins? Don't you still feel some devotion towards God? Aren't you ashamed that you became a devil? It's enough. Issei hit the table hard, taking the eyes of those around him, although he didn't seem to care. No me importa, hey. Issei looked at Asia with wide eyes after hearing his answer. Becoming a devil was the best thing that ever happened to me. To hell with God. A somewhat gloomy look adorned Asia's face, making Issei and the smaller exorcist start a little. Why do you ask a devil that, Irina? The older exorcist asked. Have you already forgotten the effects of demonic corruption? There is no such thing as a demon that is, correct. But, Zenobia, Irina exclaimed with a plaintive tone. Remember that their attitudes changed in this last millennium, they even say that demonic corruption has disappeared in the post-war generation. It's just that, just rumors. We don't know for sure. Zenobia looked at them again, clearing her throat. Anyway, get the hell out. We have nothing to talk to demons about. I will not leave, until those swords are delivered to me. Kiba finally spoke, receiving everyone's attention. I'm not going to give two holy swords to a devil. Zenobia replied, slightly clenching her fist, indicating that everything could get out of control. Isn't there a way to strike up a conversation without wanting to kill each other all the time? Akino asked, covering his smile with her hand. The answer to his question came in the form of a huge roar, the product of the stomach of both exorcists. Hum. Zenobia. I'm starving. The smaller exorcist flung herself onto the table as a dead aura began to surround her. Meanwhile, Zenobia tried to remain serious, but the huge embarrassed blush on her face only made it easier to tease her. This this wouldn't be happening, if you hadn't spent all our funds on that stupid painting. I guess we can talk while we eat. Akino took out a wallet from his pocket, denoting a large amount of yen. What do you say, Kiba? Are you hungry too? He asked himself, with a more serious look than usual. Okay, Kiba replied. This last week I haven't eaten very well. Line jump. I can't believe we took a bribe from the devils. Zenobia commented finally pulling her hood down as she ate heartily. Have you enjoyed the food? Akino asked, with clear intentions of getting the information they came for. Zenobia wiped her lips and looked at her seriously. Kokobiel already has all the fragments of the Escalibur. They all looked at her with slight surprise at her response. The only two missing parts are the ones we have. Why did he come back to Kuo? If you guys are following him, I don't see the need for that guy to come back. Issei asked with great interest. As you must be aware by now, Kokobiel is looking to start a war. Another war that is exactly the same as the one that took place a thousand years ago. Zenobia removed a fully bandaged item from her back, making all the devils slightly uncomfortable from the faint aura emanating from her. Kokobiel seeks to repair the Escalibur and take it over, in order to anger the angels. 
His second target is the Mao's sister and the current Leviathan's sister to make the devils participate as well. Hang on a minute. Issei protested. Why would a fallen angel, with such a high position, want to start a war so much? It doesn't make sense. That's very simple. Irina answered simply, making Issei pay special attention to her. That is, because her original sin is war. Original sin. Issei would wonder internally, not finding an answer. Then why don't we fix this problem right now? Kiba got up from his seat, holding out his hand. Give me the fragments. Are you deaf? Zenobia frowned slightly. As I said before, devils have nothing to do with holy sword affairs. Besides, a small smile would appear on Zenobia's face. Why should I award the remaining shards to someone who is so much weaker than me? Do you want to try it? Kiba asked with a small smile. A showdown. Zenobia got up from the seat with a smile. Okay. It will be a two-on-two -two fight. She extended her hand. If you win, you can ask for whatever you want. And if you win, Kiba asked, looking at the hand with his arms crossed. Your dear mistress will leave Kuo with her dogs. Everyone was surprised at the answer, except for Kiba. If we take one of his targets away, Kokobil might rethink his plans. That seems fine to me. Kiba shook the exorcist's hand receiving a stunned look from her companions. Kiba, Akino exclaimed, it was obvious that she disapproved of his pedantic attitude. And good, Zenobia looks at everyone with a smile. Who will be the other one? Issei got up from his seat, without saying a single word, he just looked at Kiba and the exorcist seriously. Very good, Zenobia commented, without reproach. Line jump. They were all outside the restaurant, in an alternate dimension to carry out the fight without problems. Before starting, Zenobia would draw her sword, looking at Kiba with great seriousness. Why do you want to take the Escalibur shards? Kiba's gaze would twist into a hateful one, something that took Issei by surprise. Those swords are the personification of my kidnappers, of what they did to me and my friends. I want those swords, to destroy them. I see. The sword's bandages fell away, revealing a rather strong holy aura around him. But, like I said before, there's no point in handing over these swords to someone weaker than me. Kiba narrowed his eyes with a mischievous look. That remains to be seen, he threatened, causing a large number of swords to appear around him. My ability comes from the hatred I have for my kidnappers. My hatred increases more and more just by seeing or remembering them. He took one of the swords from him, glaring at her. I will use this hatred to destroy the Escalibur the people who were involved in the experiment, and anyone who tries to get in my way of revenge. I will not stop, until I finish them all off. That's why Kiba was chasing them, Issei thought aloud, staying with his hands in his pockets. I guess I can't stay mad at him for defying the president's orders. How about we start our fight, Issei? Irina took off her robe and removed the bandages from her to the sword, revealing a beautiful face of a young woman with light brown hair and eyes. She seemed to be Issei's age. Oh. Issei was startled. I know you. The chestnut pointed at her shamelessly. Irina's face lit up for a second when she heard her words. Who are you? He put a hand to his chin, leaving Irina on the verge of tears. You do not remember me. She yelled at her, clearly offended. We were best friends when we were kids. Issei snapped his fingers. That's right. Now I remember. The brunette crossed his arms, activating his gauntlet. But before I thought you were a man, I see you've changed a lot. The brunette put his hand to his chin, studying his body. Even so, it doesn't quite come close to Tiamat, Issei blinked, completely taken aback by his thoughts. What the hell am I thinking? Oh, who knew that our reunion would be so sad? Irina hugged herself as a few small tears fell from her face. You have succumbed to your darker side and joined the demons, what happened to you, Issei? She pointed at him with the sword that appeared to be a whip. But don't worry, I'll take care of exercising you and I'm sure you'll end up in heaven, because God forgives everyone. Irina clasped her hands quickly and looked up at the sky, praying. Isn't that right, God? Please have mercy on this sinful soul. Quote dot 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 quote. What? A weird girl. Issei thought aloud while a nervous bead of sweat fell from his head. Strange. Irina asked. Is it weird that I admire God? Right. She patted her face, as if she had found the greatest answer in the universe. You are a devil. 
It is natural that prayers and faith are rare for you. Irina pointed her gun at him again, frowning. Repent of your sins, son of the devil. Quote dot 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 quote. Let me think about it, Issei said with a sly smile. No one had noticed that all this time, her gauntlet had been flashing green. Oh really? A sparkle decorated Irina's eyes. In that case, I'll give you a minute to think about it. She exclaimed, with a very cheerful smile. Thank you, Issei replied, as her gauntlet continued to flicker. Their conversation was interrupted when a huge explosion was felt in the place. Everyone stared in complete surprise at the huge crater that Zenobia had left behind. Kiba seemed to have narrowly escaped the range, carefully watching his opponent who was in the center of the crater. There is a reason why the Escalibur destruction is called the Holy Sword of Destruction. Zenobia explained, pointing the huge sword at Kiba. Only a part of the Seven has that much power, Kiba thought aloud, somewhat surprised. Destroying all seven is going to be an uphill battle. He would conclude, with a fake smile on his face. It can't be. I managed to concentrate so much power in just one second, Akino commented, being the one who seemed to be the most surprised, along with Asia. Why are they so surprised? Issei thought, with a raised eyebrow. It wasn't a big deal. Let's see who is stronger. Kiba materialized a great sword. Whether your holy sword, or my demon sword. Kiba ran towards Zenobia with the intention of cutting her into a thousand pieces, but the woman moved much faster than him and managed to dodge without a problem, jumping backwards. Not yet. Kiba plunged his sword deep into the ground, causing a huge amount of swords to shoot out in his direction. It's too bad. Zenobia closed her eyes, loading a large amount of holy magic onto the sword. As the multiple swords were about to reach their destination, Zenobia swung her sword in Kiba's direction, creating a small, highly condensed D-shaped holy magic attack, which destroyed all the swords and passed through the path without any trouble. Kiba blinked in disbelief as he saw the attack about to hit him. The blonde materialized another sword to have a better chance of defending himself, but it was all in vain. Kiba's demon swords didn't take more than two seconds to break, receiving the full blow. a a a a a a a g h h h h Kiba screamed in great pain, being swept away by the sheer force of the attack, until he finally crashed into the restaurant and set off a small explosion on the spot. Kiba, all his friends shouted, alarmed by the force of the attack. Issei stayed in place, still with his arms crossed, while Asia went to help the unconscious Kiba, who was lying with serious injuries all over his body, especially where the attack hit. It looked like some kind of strange magic slash, but it turned out to be a mere destructive magic attack, like dragon shot. Issei thought, carefully analyzing the attack. If I had concentrated that attack to a more precise level, perhaps, Issei blinked in slight surprise as he found something interesting. Wait. Are swords capable of creating magical cuts? It might be possible, but I would need to concentrate magic without a previous spell, just like Tiamat taught me last time. That would be very interesting, he would conclude feeling a small need to practice with swords. Only you remain. Issei woke up from her thoughts after hearing Zenobia. What will you do? I don't think you want to face me, after what you saw. All set. Partner. Diedrag spoke in Issei's mind, making the brunette smile. Thank you, Diedrag. She thought to herself, noting that the gauntlet had already stopped blinking. Wait. Zenobia. Irina exclaimed, causing the aforementioned to look at her with a raised eyebrow. Issei is planning to surrender to the grace of God. Oh really? Zenobia looked at Issei with wide eyes. Without a doubt, it is very interesting to see a devil accept God. Oh, that, a small smile appeared on Issei's face. She was just kidding. That, Irina yelled, about to cry. How can you mock the Lord? It was to be expected. Zenobia commented, preparing to give him a large thrust with her sword. Even if you are a devil, we will not forgive that offense. A very threatening golden aura completely surrounded Zenobia's body, while the tip of the sword pointed at Issei's chest. Don't worry, I promise not to attack you with all my power. Killing you would only give us unnecessary trouble. The ground began to crack dangerously, causing everyone present to look at her in astonishment, even her partner. The only one who didn't seem surprised was Issei. The brunette still continued with his arms crossed, her smile twisted into a serious look as he looked at her attentively. Get ready, Zenobia yelled, 
raising the sword over her shoulder, causing a blizzard to rise up around her. Wait, I guess it's not necessary to go that far, Irina exclaimed, completely disagreeing. This will teach you not to mock God. Zenobia stepped forward, with clear intentions to lash out at Issei, but something very strange happened. Just as the exorcist brought her sword forward to begin the attack, a huge tremor struck the place, along with a dull thud that resounded throughout the place. Zenobia's eyes widened to the point of being wide and her mouth fell open abruptly, vomiting a large amount of blood in the process. Rule number one. You must never underestimate your opponent under any circumstances. That's what my master taught me. Issei commented with a smile. Her casual expression was completely overshadowed, thanks to her hand being completely buried in Zenobia's abdomen. Irina could only widen her eyes in shock at what she witnessed. Issei finally slowly pulled away, leaving Zenobia to catch air. Zenobia dropped her sword in pain and clung tightly to her stomach, as a gasp dulled by lack of air escaped her lips. Her eyes trembled as she seemed to be writhing in pain from just one blow. Zenobia, are you all right? Irina quickly came to help her, with great concern. When it seemed that she had controlled the pain because she had stopped screaming, Irina's worry increased even more when Zenobia fell to her knees on the ground. What was that? Zenobia thought, her eyes trembling in pain. I didn't even see when she moved. Zenobia. Irina helped her up. Thanks. I think I can continue now. Zenobia replied, picking up the sword from the ground. I agree. Irina replied, not quite agreeing with the idea of continuing the fight. Irina. We will go all out. Zenobia fixed her gaze on Issei. Both at the same time. Issei crossed his arms. I wonder how strong they will be with combo attacks. Zenobia would narrow her eyes. It doesn't seem to bother her in the least that we both attack at the same time. She thought her. Irina. The young woman looked at her carefully. First. Let's try to make him dizzy and then attack him. Irina just nodded. Agreeing with the plan. They would both run at high speed towards Issei. Passing only a few inches from touching him. They repeated the sequence several times. Passing very close to him causing the chestnut's hair to wave in various directions due to their great speed. Still, there was something. Off. That. Irina's brows twitched as she walked past Issei again. She's not moving at all. Can't she see us? Was that hit just lucky? No. It can't be that. Zenobia stopped out of nowhere a few meters from Issei and extended her arm, throwing the sword at an enormous speed. The exorcist widened her eyes in shock as the sword pierced through Issei's body, apparently. Irina positioned herself just behind Issei's back, and used the length of her whip to her advantage to hit them from a distance, which ended up having the same result as the previous one. All the attacks pierced through Issei's body, as if he were an illusion. But what? Irina exclaimed, stopping her attacks. Attacks just go right through it. That gauntlet. Zenobia thought carefully. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before Ag. Zenobia screamed in pain as Issei appeared out of nowhere and punched her in the face. Zenobia took several steps back while covering her face and her body trembled in pain. Is seriously? Issei asked, still with his fist extended from him. I'm sure I didn't use too much force, he told himself, looking at his hand with a raised eyebrow. I couldn't see it again, Irina thought, clinging even tighter to her weapon as she stared at him in disbelief. It definitely wasn't luck. Zenobia finally stopped taking steps back, though her body continued to tremble slightly. Her blood began to flow through her hands, and when she uncovered her face, it was possible to see that her nose was bleeding too much. Zenobia started to sigh, thinking of getting used to the pain. Damned. She spat furiously. Now you'll see. She would extend her hand to the side, and close her eyes. Petra, Bashrius, Ryunishius, and Santa Maria. Please hear my cry. After saying those words, a golden magic circle would appear, from which a blue-colored sword that was chained would begin to come out. And with this sword of punishment, allow me freedom. Zenobia took the sword, breaking all the chains in the process. Holy sword. Delendal. Delendal. Issei wondered with a raised eyebrow. It's a holy sword on top of even Excalibur itself. Zenobia answered. I see. Sounds interesting. Issei answered, putting a hand to his chin. You don't take it seriously, huh? Zenobia asked, then her eyes widened dangerously. It will cost you. Zenobia tried to give him a big thrust, 
just at the same time that Irina attacked him with her holy sword. Issei turned around at great speed, and crouched slightly, positioning his hands perfectly, and caught the two swords before they could touch his body, generating a small crater at his feet. With bare hand, Zenobia thought, completely incredulous. Irina didn't even have time to protest, since Issei tried to give her a side kick that she dodged with a jump. Her kick continued like the needle of a clock, until it reached Zenobia. She was also able to dodge it with a small jump. Issei gave a small jump and turned on himself, ending up on his feet while his arms remained crossed in X. Ah! Issei jerked his arms out to the sides, creating a huge blizzard along with a bright red light. The two women went flying at enormous speed without warning, due to the huge blizzard. What the fuck? Zenobia thought as she covered her face from all the debris that had been blown out from such an explosion of power. Irina ended up crashing into the restaurant, while Zenobia was able to get back up when the unstoppable blizzard finally subsided. Zenobia stood up, while Irina joined her friend as quickly as possible. The dust finally began to clear, causing both of them to widen their eyes in shock at what they were witnessing. A thin crimson aura surrounded the armor that now protected Issei. The brunette still remained in the same position as always, waiting for his next moves. It's obvious that we won't be able to beat him in a hand-to-hand -hand battle. Zenobia gave the point to her. Irina. Irina nodded seriously, having learned what her companion was planning. Both of them began to create small magic circles. The amount was such that they ended up covering her figure completely. Ah. Both of them yelled loudly releasing a large number of small magical attacks that went towards a single target. Issei continued to cross his arms. All he did was materialize his helmet. All the attacks began to impact against Issei, although his armor did not seem to receive even the slightest scratch. Just as the magical attack stopped, Zenobia appeared at Issei's side out of nowhere, charging the same attack she did to Kiba onto her sword. Let's see if your armor can take this. She yelled throwing the attack at him, which was visibly much stronger than the previous one. Issei just watched as the attack came towards him, then frowned. Do you think I'm an idiot? The brunette yelled, deflecting the attack with his hand like it was nothing. Even so, his gauntlet had been damaged quite a bit. Irina widened her eyes when she saw the attack headed towards her position, narrowly dodging it. The girl observed the explosion caused while the drops of sweat began to adorn her face. Good thing you dodged it. Ah. Irina gave a big scream, completely terrified when she saw that Issei was almost glued to her back. The small smile on the brunette's face was not appropriate to the situation. Don't scare me like that. She yelled again, releasing a large number of thrusts, all of which were dodged by Issei without any trouble. Don't let him get away, Irina. Zenobia ordered, running quickly to go to her friend and beginning to make several endless thrusts from behind completely surrounding him. Still, that was too far to be enough. The two women were attacking at a speed that even their expectants couldn't keep up with well. Anyway, Issei moved her body from one side to the other, he crouched and swayed from one side to the other, he dodged all of that without any problem. She dodged absolutely all of her attacks with unusual speed, and the most incredible thing was that she could dodge Zenobia's thrusts without even looking at her. After being like this for a few seconds, Issei's face became serious and he disappeared out of nowhere, causing Irina to hit Zenobia with her whip and both of them were completely entangled. Did they give up? They both looked up, to see how Issei was watching from the sky. Irina, distract him while I prepare the attack. Zenobia whispered, before untying herself. Issei went down to the ground and looked at them, seeing that they still wanted to fight. I don't have much longer to drag this out. We need to share the information with the president, Issei thought, creating a small ball of crimson energy in his hand. Now Irina, Zenobia yelled, pulling her sword back, charging the same powerful attack as last time. Here I go, Irina pounced at great speed, although things didn't go as she expected. Issei lunged at her when she was halfway there, receiving a strong kick to the chest that caused him to cough up a large amount of blood. Irina flew towards Zenobia so she was forced to drop her sword and grab her friend so she wouldn't fall with her. Are you all right, Irina? Zenobia smiled as Irina opened her eyes, but her smile instantly faded when she saw that Issei was in front of the two of them, with a small magical orb aiming at her heads. Lower your heads, 
They were the simple words of the brown. The girls had no choice but to obey. Dragon shot. Diedrake's voice was accompanied by a huge screeching vibration, along with a gigantic roar that seemed to have no end. The exorcists had their eyes wide open after hearing such a huge explosion. And the most impressed of all was undoubtedly Irina, since she was witnessing what had caused said explosion. Quote dot dot dot. I remember. Zenobia turned her face away, to see how the restaurant had disappeared without a trace. That gauntlet. Only wielders of the Welsh dragon have it. End of chapter. Chapter 15. Demons, exorcists, crazy old ones, holy swords, and a cadre. I never would have imagined that the Welsh dragon wielder belonged to the devils. Zenobia commented, while she was still resting in the created dimension, together with Irina. It's a long story, Issei replied. He was sitting on the grass together with the exorcists, while he waited for them and Kiva to recover. Looking at it now, I think it wasn't so bad talking to you guys. Zenobia's comment made everyone look at her in slight astonishment. If they're with the Sekariote, it means their chances of winning weren't as imaginary as I thought. Don't try to divert the subject. Kiba. All his companions exclaimed, seeing that he had finally woken up. You lost. Keep your part of the bargain, and give me the swords. Kiba commented with a certain coldness in his words. Hey. Irina exclaimed, completely startled. We shouldn't have been so trusting, Zenobia. Her companion scolded her, causing Zenobia to lower her head, clearly embarrassed that she had been carried away by her apparent superiority. I'm sorry, Irina. Zenobia apologized, looking away. Everyone looked too weak. The exorcist would fix her gaze on Issei. I didn't imagine that the weakest of them could multiply their levels in such an absurd way. Zenobia removed the sword from her back, intending to give it to Issei. Issei looked at the sword for a few seconds, thinking carefully. I was the one who won, so that means I get to decide what the deal will be, right? Issei asked, receiving an intrigued look from Zenobia. Well, yes, that's what we agreed on. But, weren't you both looking for the same thing? She asked herself, looking at Kiba. The blonde looked at Issei slightly clenching his fists for obvious reasons. On second thought, I would like to make another kind of deal. Kiba tried to get up to interrupt him, but was stopped by Kaneko. This is not the time for you to get carried away by your emotions, Kiba. The albina scolded him, making Kiba could only clench his teeth. What kind of deal? Zenobia asked with clear interest in the topic. You can keep the swords. He commented to her a sly smile beginning to appear on her face. But they must fight alongside us to stop Kokobiel. That, absolutely everyone screamed, without exception. Issei, it's absurd for followers of God and demons to fight together. Akino exclaimed, with a very disapproving tone. Do you know what that means? What's wrong with it? Issei asked with an innocent smile on her face. We accept. The devils looked at Zenobia in great surprise. A deal is a deal. She said simply, and the blonde, she mentioned her, causing Kiba to give her a cold look. When all this is over, you can do whatever you want with the Escalibur shards. Hearing this, the blonde blinked in surprise. A sword that has caused so many people to suffer, does not deserve to bear the title of holy sword. He finished, getting up. Hey hey. Irina approached squatting at a frighteningly fast speed towards Issei, making the brown-haired man startle. Why do you agree to help some exorcists? I just, I don't want anyone to die. Issei commented, flustered by the sudden approach. The two exorcists were visibly shocked by her response. Not even us, Irina asked, with a cheerful twinkle in her eyes. Of course not, Issei answered. Seriously, that's why I invited you to form a temporary team. I know there are differences between us, but we are all looking for the same goal. And what is that goal? Zenobia asked looking at him over her shoulder. Don't let innocent people die for this. Issei declared with great seriousness. The decision and firmness in his words made the two exorcists stare at him for a short second. It's going hands, Irina. Zenobia commented, looking towards the front. Yes, yes. Context Irina, rising from a leap. See you tomorrow at the academy after school to make plans. Zenobia commented. Both women started to leave, but before leaving, Zenobia gave her one last look. I almost forgot. Sekariote, I have a message for you. Hearing this, 
Issei looked at her with great intrigue. The Hakuryuko has already awakened. After hearing that name, Issei could feel how every inch of his skin stood on end. She didn't know why, but just hearing that, she sent a deep chill through her entire body that seemed to have no end. Issei didn't understand why he had reacted like this, but if he could be sure of something, that reaction could not indicate anything good. Line jump. Join with the exorcists. Rhea stared at them, thinking calmly. Quote dot dot dot. I think it's not a very bad idea. At least, just this once. Declared the president, looking at all her servants. The only ones that weren't there were Kiba and Issei. We need all the help we can get to stop Kokobil, and only someone with a very bad temper wouldn't accept help. She finished her, with a smile to see that things were turning out better than she expected. How do you intend to use them? Asia asked curiously. From what I was informed, they are much stronger than Kiba. Therefore, they would serve in the front line. Rias would narrow her eyes in a somewhat dark manner. That way, if someone dies, it will be them and not us. Rias, I have a question. Kaneko commented, with his typical neutrality. I hear you. How do we know that we will be enough to defeat Kokobil? From what I understand, his power is much higher than Razor. The Albina commented, making it clear that they did not know the potential of a cadre. In Kokobil's case, he is known to be the weakest cadre. That doesn't mean it won't be a problem, but I think all of us together and with Hyoto's help will be a piece of cake. Rias ordered the papers from him, giving everyone one last look. If things get complicated, Sona will be in charge of calling my brother and Seraphal. Obviously, I would not like to go to that point, because I would like to prove to Sirzex that my peerage has enough power to enter the rating games, despite of not being complete. Of course, I hadn't thought of that last. Akino would clarify, bowing her head. It is a perfect opportunity for you to rise above the other devils of your generation. That's how it is. Rias nodded, with an ambitious smile. I want to prove to the demon world that I am much better than my cousin. But, for them to agree to those terms, you'll need a ridiculously strong minion. Kaneko gave the point to him, taking a sweet. Speaking of which, Rias raised her gaze, denoting great intrigue. Where is Issei? The three women looked at each other seriously, then looked at their mistress. We think the matter may be a bit tricky. Rias blinked in anticipation after listening to Akino, waiting for the answer. Line jump. Concentrating a large amount of magic without using a magic circle is very difficult. Don't be upset if you don't even get it for a few months. Tiamat commented, studying his gaze as Issei was attempting to release all of her magical reserves into her hand but she was barely carrying a small violet orb that was barely visible. Personally, it took me more than four months to perfect the attack that I demonstrated to you before. Seconds passed, and he didn't get an answer from Issei. Which I miss him terribly. She looked up, to see that Issei's face seemed to be different than usual. He seemed to be very worried about something. Obviously, this was something that Tiamat was not going to let go, for someone so important to her. Hey Issei. Are you listening to me? Tiamat asked, getting up and passing his hand in front of the vision of him, causing Issei to wake up. Oh, the chestnut exclaimed, destroying what little concentration he had, making the little robe disappear from his hands. Sorry. He apologized, looking away. It's just that I found out something. Hearing this, Tiamat quickly sat down in front of him. It worries you, he asked, hoping to help him. Yeah. Issei rubbed at his hair, taking a deep breath. It's the Hakuryuko, he's already awakened. And, honestly, I don't know what to think. Diedrag has always told me that all the wielders end up killing each other. The battle to the death between them is predestined. Issei would look Tiamat in the eye, denoting great uncertainty in his gaze. Being one of the two carriers, I guess my fight against him won't take too long to happen. Are you afraid? Tiamat's question caused Issei to widen her eyes beyond power. Fear. He wondered aloud to himself. Yes. Against Tiamat. I am afraid of dying. Issei rubbed his hair, while thinking carefully about the question. I think. I think so. Issei looked down at her, a depressing smile on her face. I'm a coward, right? Tiamat looked at him for a short second without saying a word, until a smile finally appeared on her face. She placed her hand on Issei's shoulder, 
giving it a comforting little squeeze, making the brunette look at her in great surprise. That is not true, the dragon declared with great conviction. Fearing fear of death doesn't make you a coward, it makes you someone. Does it make me someone? Issei asked, not quite understanding what she meant. Tiamat brought her hand to Issei's cheek. She makes you someone, because you can feel. Tiamat would use his free hand to bring Issei's hand to her chest, making the brunette feel his heartbeat. You feel it? The dragon asked. Issei couldn't help but look away with a small blush, but he was still able to answer. Yeah. Now, tell me. This time, Tiamat brought Issei's hand to his chest, intertwining her hand with his so that they both felt the heartbeat. Do you feel something? After the question, Issei couldn't help but look at her to answer her. At that moment, it was when she was able to notice the small blush that accompanied her cute smile. Her light blue eyes were shining with an intensity out of the ordinary. All of that only made her look more and more beautiful. In fact, the shock was so much to Issei that all sound became inaudible, accompanying it with utter darkness. The only thing he could see and hear was the beautiful figure of Tiamat, along with his heartbeat. Suddenly, the voices of his friends Matsuda and Motohama began to be heard in his mind, so that later the voices of his precious clubmates were heard. I can feel it. Issei replied, with a smile. I know why I'm afraid of dying. I don't want to forget my best friends, I don't want to forget my classmates, I don't want to forget my mistress. Issei would fix his gaze on Tiamat's face, causing her to blink with intrigue. But above all things, I would not like to forget you. Issei gave her a big hug, causing a big blush to shoot across Tiamat's face from her action and her nice words. Even so, she didn't take long to answer him showing him the great affection she had for him with a single hug. I can feel, thanks to you. I wouldn't want to forget you for the world either. She would cling even tighter to the hug, burying her face in Issei's neck. And I wouldn't want to lose you for anything in the world either. That's why I'll protect you every time it's necessary. That will be so, only until I become stronger than you. Issei commented with some grace, making Tiamat laugh a little. The dragon separated a little from Issei to look into his eyes. Not giving up yet, huh? I'm not going to do it. Issei exclaimed with a toothy smile. It will be very funny when he finds out that I am one of the four dragon kings, Tiamat thought. Well, shall we go back to training? Issei asked with renewed energy. No, Tiamat replied, completely separating from Issei. This made the brunette look at her with confusion. Being afraid is okay. What's not okay is letting yourself be controlled by fear. I declare the dragon with more seriousness than usual. At least for today, we will do a special training. A special training? Issei asked with slight excitement, though he was quickly overshadowed by mounting terror as he saw a great icy and terrifying aura begin to surround Tiamat. That's how it is. Tiamat would cross her arms, just at the same time that a gloomy look adorned his face. A special training to control your fear. Several hours later, Tiamat would appear in Issei's room through a celestial magic circle, laying the chestnut on his bed. You could clearly see how Issei's soul wanted to leave his body at all costs. I think it happened to me. Tiamat would rub her hair, seeing how Issei was. Just as he was about to leave, she gave him one last look. Her eyes glowed warmly, and she proceeded to cover him. See you, she said softly, giving him a small kiss on the forehead. Line jump. I still find it incredible that you agreed to work alongside them. Irina commented, moving her feet happily on one of the church pews that had been vandalized earlier. As I said before, a deal is a deal. Zenobia clarified seriously, eating the noodles calmly. Besides, I must admit that the Secariote's help will come in handy. The exorcist looked up from her, narrowing her eyes seriously. When we attacked him, he was moving so fast that we didn't even see his movement. In fact, it seemed like he was using some kind of magic to get our attacks through him. It was impressive. Do you think that will be enough to defeat Kokobiel? Irina asked, starting to eat with her friend. I don't know. I'm sure the Sekariote used all their power against us, but I can't say the same for Kokobiel. Zenobia replied, looking intently at her noodles. For that reason, we must not trust each other. Yeah, Irina exclaimed, raising her hand with joy. Zenobia started to stir her noodles, remembering the talk she had with Issei. To be more specific, she remembered the very noble goal that she had mentioned. 
Do you know something? Irina looked at her friend with great intrigue after hearing her tone of voice. After what your childhood friend told me, he makes me believe that the disappearance of the demonic corruption are not mere rumors. She concluded, with a small smile on her face. No demon would want to defend innocent people. You think so too? Irina exclaimed with a big smile on her face, being answered by a nod from Zenobia. Line jump. Have we all met yet? Rias asked with his typical smile, seeing that his servants and the exorcists were sitting on the chairs, while all the Sona nobility was at the entrance together with the aforementioned. The only one missing from the meeting was Kiba. What do you think if we organize the plans and we don't waste any more time? Zenobia asked, clearly uncomfortable being surrounded by so many devils. Luckily for her, she'd had to share a place with the only demon she'd liked so far. She is right. Issei would nod. Kokobiel is already in the city. We don't know if he could attack in a week, or today. There's no need to be so uptight. Rias clarified with a nervous smile. We already discussed everything with Sona. We know what roles each one will have in the fight. Considering that the academy is our territory headquarters, Kokobiel will attack this place without a doubt. Sona stated seriously. The plan is for me and my peerage to create a powerful shield so that no one can teleport from the inside out, and vice versa. I get it. That way, the enemies won't be able to escape. Zenobia said. But are you well aware of the risks involved? Of course. Sona adjusted her glasses. If the situation becomes critical, I will remove the spell and call the Mao and my sister. And why not do it now? Zenobia asked, narrowing her eyes in great suspicion. We would save ourselves a lot of trouble. What do the details matter? Rias answered her, making Zenobia look at her carefully. You lost the previous bet, so you don't have the right to question anything. Rias would put her hand to her face, giving a small sigh. If you want to know the answer so badly, Sirzex and Seraphal are too busy to attend to a problem like this. The tension began to be felt in the air, making Issei swallow hard. After Zenobia and Rias were staring at each other, the exorcist finally relented and closed her eyes. I suppose you're right. It's not my concern what the demons do. Oh, more like, what they don't do. A small mocking smile shot onto Zenobia's face after her last words. I think you have a lot of experience with it. Akino would say, covering her mouth to hide his typical smile. After all, they have completely failed to recover the Escalibur fragments. Can we focus, please? Issei got up from her seat with a big jump, cutting off the heavy atmosphere that was being generated in the small room. You're right, Issei. Rias sighed. This is no time for silly discussions. He clarified with great seriousness. Listen well. As we already know, Kokobiel is in league with that freed guy, and the creator of the Holy Sword Project, Galilei. The latter won't be a problem, but freed is something else. He will use the already unified Escalibur fragments to fight, and that will be a big problem for the devils. Rias looks at Zenobia and Irina. For that reason, I want you two to lead the attack on him, while we take care of Kokobiel. I'll also take care of Freed, and Galilei. Everyone would look towards the entrance in surprise after hearing a familiar voice. Kiba, Issei exclaimed with joy, after seeing his partner again at the club after several days. I'm glad you're back. Kiba. Kaneko commented with a small smile, something out of the ordinary for her. Issei. Issei looked at him expectantly at the mention of him. At first, I was angry with you for denying me the chance to destroy two fragments of the Escalibur. But then I thought about it with a colder mind, and I think you're right. Kiba tightly clenched his fists. The best option is this. Very good, Kiba. Rias cleared her throat of her, causing the blonde to look at her with a bit of pity. President, he said, not even being able to look at her face. Don't worry, we can fix our misunderstanding later. Rias clarified, causing Kiba to look up from him in genuine surprise. Then, you two will fight alongside the exorcists. Yeah, she responded without delaying more than a second, kneeling down to show him respect. Issei could only smirk seeing that the team seemed to be back. Issei. Yeah, the brown-haired man immediately brought his attention to her mistress after hearing her call. You will be the most important in the operation. Rias's words caught the brunette a bit off guard. We will support you, you have to kill. Rias could not finish issuing her orders, as a huge tremor occurred in the club, 
at the same time that they were forced into an exact copy of the academy, causing the entire sky and atmosphere to be painted green. What the hell is going on? Saji exclaimed, after almost falling over due to the huge tremor in the place. It's here. Sona declared with absolute seriousness, making everyone stand up from their seats and grab their respective weapons. You know the plan. Let's go. Ordered Rias, receiving a nod from everyone. Line jump. Kokabil would be sitting on top of Kuo Academy, waiting for his potential victims while tapping on the roof with his fingers, indicating his impatience. After waiting for several seconds, a big Machiavellian smile appeared on his face when he saw how Rias appeared running from the Academy's garden, along with her entourage. You finally show up, Kokabil declared with his smile still valid. She was starting to get impatient. Kokabil, Rias exclaimed, looking towards the top of the Academy. Kokabil's smile twisted into a serious look when he noticed something strange. Wait a moment, the fallen angel looked around for him. Where is the brat Citri? I can still feel her energy around this place. The answer hit him instantly, when a huge violet-colored barrier completely covered the entire academy, causing Kokobiel to get a little surprise. I see, he said seriously, and then a gloomy smile appeared on his face. So, some mere reincarnated devils and the bratty Grimori think she can beat me. He asked himself, laughing at them. It's the least I could expect. After all, the Grimori is a spoiled brat who has no idea of the power I possess. But I didn't expect that from the sea tree, since she had a reputation of being someone more or less intelligent. Kokobiel thought with a mocking smile. Surely that brat must have convinced her. Kokobiel thought, fixing her gaze on Rias. After all, they both live in a bubble. I'll be very amused when they deeply regret not calling their brothers from the beginning. Kokobiel would raise his hand, making a little snap with his fingers. But for now, I think I can have a little fun. He would conclude. Rias and her entourage watched as two figures made an appearance after Kokobiel's snap. Oh. Freed was the first to speak, fixing his gaze on Issei. Long time no see. How have you been, you fucking demon? Freed asked, with his typical psycho smile. We will be your opponents. Zenobia, Irina, and Kiba would step forward, pointing their respective swords at him. Oh I see. Freed exclaimed, waving his sword like a moron. The three of you want a rematch. They can come at the same time, I don't care. The result will be the same. Declared the deranged exorcist, making his sword shine with great intensity. The only thing I ask of you is that you don't get in my way. Kiba declared, taking a step forward. That should say me. Zenobia replied, imitating the blonde's action. By the power of the church, and by the power of God, you will be punished for your crimes. Irina exclaimed, joining the duo. That remains to be seen, whore. Freed yelled, disappearing from the place like the other three, starting their fight. Kokobiel lowered to the ground, causing the remaining people to look at the cadre cautiously. The fallen angel looked up, denoting an evil smile on his face. A smile that had to be slaked with blood. Do you think they'll be able to make it? Saji asked being able to keep the barrier active with some difficulty. The only thing we can do is trust them. Sona declared solemnly. I guess the numbers don't favor you too. Much, Kokobiel. Rias would scoff, crossing her arms with a smile. Numbers. Do you think I would need more allies to kill vermin like you? Kokobiel asked, laughing at Rias' baseless confidence. But you're right. A sinister smile graced the cadre's face. If we even up the numbers a bit, this will be a lot more fun and interesting. Rias blinked in disbelief at his words. What do you mean pair up? Kokobiel's smile intensified even more at the question. The cadre raised his hand to the front, creating two magic circles where two terrifying dogs with three large heads appeared. Summon Cerberos from the Twelve Gates of Hell. Rias exclaimed in complete disbelief. Only ultimate class devils are supposed to have access to the inner abyss of hell. Ha ha ha. Kokobiel looked strongly. That's right. Killing that weakling demon in the Great War at the end did help. He exclaimed with a sadistic smile on his face. One of the Cerberi went in the direction where Freed was fighting, causing the fight to be interrupted. Thanks. I really needed a little hand, boss. The exorcist exclaimed with a mad smile on his face. How annoying. Xenobia whispered under her breath. Irina, take care of the damn dog. Okay. 
exclaimed the brunette with a big smile on her face. I guess there's no other choice, Rhea said to herself. Issei, we'll take care of the Cerberus. Okay. Issei took a big leap, sliding behind the Cerberos with ease. Oh. Kokobiel put a hand to his chin with a smile. Do you have that much trust in this guy? I'll make sure to subdue him, until he gives up, President. Issei exclaimed, putting the gauntlet in front of her face to emphasize her words. A reddish energy completely surrounded him, indicating that he had been accumulating a large amount of augments without anyone noticing. Issei. This is not a raiding game. Rius yelled at him, dodging an attack from the Cerberos. This is a real enemy. You can't risk it. You have to kill him. Hearing those words, Issei's eyes widened. Quote dot dot dot. Kill him. That gauntlet. Kokobiel thought aloud in amazement. I see. It wasn't just rumors. He concluded, making a huge smile appear on his face. This could be much more interesting than I imagined from the beginning. Partner. This is not the time to hesitate. Diedreg exclaimed, freeing Issei from his internal fight. Why yes. Issei's answer only made Diedreg worry even more. If he continues with those human thoughts, this won't end well. Diedreg thought, gritting his teeth. Let's see what you're made of, wielder of Diedreg. Kokobiel commented, crossing his arms. But before we start, I'd like to make you a proposition. Issei looked at him with great curiosity. I can let you live after our fight, if you agree to join me. Kokobiel raised both of his hands with a big toothy smile. What do you say? In addition to having exciting and unforgettable battles every day, I also promise you all the women you want. Don't be ridiculous. Hey. Kokobiel looked genuinely surprised. Hardly anyone dared to insult him. Do you think I'm going to abandon my classmates and friends, just to save my butt? Issei's question sounded more like a threat, causing Kokobiel to look at him in astonishment. Hum hum hum. Ha 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 ha. Kokobiel was strongly seen by the unexpected attitude of his opponent. Very interesting. Kokobiel would get into a fighting stance. A serious expression would grace his face for the first time. So, let's get started. Issei clenched both of his fists tightly, trembling slightly. What the hell are you doing, partner? Use balance breaker. Diedreg yelled in his mind. No, first I want to see if it's necessary, maybe I can come to terms with him. Damn. There's no way to reason with a guy who is blinded and obsessed by bloodshed. Don't be naive. Diedreg tried to reason with him, but his words were of no avail. Issei quickly charged at the cadre with various kicks and punches. The fallen angel was able to block each of them with great ease. His serious look turned to a disappointed one, thinking that she had expected too much from the guy in front of him. You don't even make me sweat, Kokobiel commented blocking all the attacks without breaking a sweat. Are you really the Sekariote? The cadre sneered, clearly disappointed in the demonstration he was receiving from Issei. Be quiet. It was the only thing the chestnut could say, trying to hit him in vain. Kokobiel was having it easier. He even took the trouble to divert his gaze towards Freed, to see how their fight was going. Stop moving so much, you fucking bitch. Freed yelled attempting to slash Xenobia with the Excalibur fragments that had been assembled. Without a doubt, combat is made much more difficult with the Excalibur's abilities combined. She declared the Exorcist, doing a backflip, and rolling on the ground to dodge several slashes, then jumped up and clashed her sword with Freed's heavily. It would be a big problem, if she was fighting alone. She finished, with a smirk. Freed gritted his teeth as Kiba appeared from behind him hoping to end the match by splitting him in half with his demon sword. Seeing this, Kokobiel caught Issei's fist as he blocked it. Following that, the brown-haired man punched him with all his might in the abdomen that did not flinch the cadre, causing Issei to widen his eyes in disbelief. Kokobiel raised her hand to where Kiba was, creating a small magic circle that began to materialize a strong ball of golden energy. Kiba, watch out, Issei yelled, intending to get in the way of the attack but since Kokobiel was grabbing him, it was impossible for him. The attack went off in less than a second, creating a huge explosion on the spot. Freed and Xenobia flew out of the dust, but they hadn't taken any damage. After a few seconds, the dust completely dissipated, seeing that there was a crater of considerable size, where Kiba seemed to be fairly well. Osa it seemed, as he was standing with light scratches on his body. His sword was missing, 
Apparently. That cockroach. Kokobiel said with a smile. He just deflected the path of his sword to block the attack. He survived by a miracle. Kiba wiped the sweat from his face, while trying to control his erratic breathing. I heard that an experimental subject managed to escape. Kiba would look up from her, clenching his teeth tightly. And of all things, he became a demon. Galilei commented, approaching the weakened Kiba. I have to say that I am grateful, because thanks to you my goal was achieved. Did it come true? Kiba asked, not understanding what he meant. The holy will that the experimental subjects had was not enough for a holy sword. Galilei raised his finger, to emphasize his next words. Then, I came to a conclusion. I just had to divert that subject's will. He clarified with a sadistic expression on his face. Hearing this, Kiba couldn't help but widen his eyes in shock. And I did that, crystallizing it. Galilei would take out a small blue crystal from his pocket. This is the crystallized holy will of that moment. Kiba looked at the stone with a frozen expression. And now this is the last one left. Freed would laugh out loud, getting up off the floor. Except me, all the bodies broke and died trying to integrate the crystal into their souls. Freed raised the Escalibur with great pride. When you look at it like this, you'll see that I'm really super super special. That's what someone puts on when they perform the ritual to use a holy sword, Zenobia thought. Remembering that she and Irina had to use it. Those hypocrites tried to get rid of me, while shamelessly taking the results of my research. Galilei explained with a maniacal grin on his face. Now they try to divert the holy will without killing the subjects. I conclude, laughing. That means there was no need for us to die back then. Kiba declared, getting fully to his feet as she glared at him with great hatred. Because, you were just experimental material. Galilei shrugged. We had to get rid of you once the objective was achieved. We always believed that it was a just death. Kiba clenched his fists tightly, trembling with hatred. We were just, just disposable materials. Kiba wondered, unable to believe everything he was hearing. Galilei threw the stone at his feet. You can keep it if you want. He commented with complete confidence. We are capable of mass producing something much more refined than that. Kiba grabbed the crystal a wistful look running across his face. Huya. Dejano's why run? The voices of his friends came like a painful memory to his mind, making him grip the glass tightly with both hands. How could he have done something so cruel? Issei wondered out loud, not being able to believe what she was hearing. This is the supernatural world, brat. Kokobiel's words made Issei look at him. It is normal for misfortune to persecute the weakest. All of us, Kiba squeezed the crystal even harder, causing it to start to glow. We die. Kiba began to mumble, his face remaining obscured by his hair. Didn't you listen? Freed asked with a psychotic smile. You died in vain. He yelled with great joy, causing Kiba's body to start trembling greatly. Do you want me to repeat it to you again? The sadistic tone in his voice was unbearable. His maniacal laughter was cut off instantly when he saw something strange about the blonde. The blue aura began to change into a black one, expanding around Kiba. Odio. Lo odias. Matalo. Destroy it. Akabalus. Tear it to pieces. Don't leave anything of him. Voices began to haunt Kiba's head, making the hatred in his heart intensify even more, increasing the black aura that was surrounding him. Galilei watched all this with wide-eyed eyes. He couldn't understand what was happening. Kiba opened his hands slightly revealing that the blue crystal slowly began to turn black. When the darkness took over the crystal completely, the darkness that was around Kiba entered his body, and the crystal shattered into pieces. It doesn't matter that you are in league with a cadre. Vengeance will be mine. Kiba fixed his gaze on Galilei, making the old man take a step back, startled. Doesn't that remind you of something, Issei? Diedrag's words made the brunette listen to his mind. It's the same as when you got your balance breaker. The only thing different, is that you got it through goodwill. Oh. Kokobiel looked at the blonde with crossed arms. I'll make sure. Kiba would materialize a completely black sword, which contained a thin golden line down the middle. To avenge them. Ah everyone. Ah us. Kiba would point his sword at Galilei, intending to cut him into a thousand pieces. Free. Galilei yelled with great fear, being instantly attended to by the aforementioned, getting in the way of Kiba. Kiba. Smash the Escalibur. 
Issei's scream made Kiba look at him. Show that your balance breaker is stronger than that cursed sword. Show that your will is stronger. Issei exclaimed with great confidence. Issei. Kiba would look towards his enemy, flashing a small murderous smile. Of course my will is strong. Otherwise, I would never have gotten here. If I hadn't had a strong will, I would never have sold my soul to the devil. He thought the blonde, increasing his smile a little more. Everything, to savor this moment. Of course you will, Kiba. Rias declared, releasing a great power through a magic circle that finished destroying Cerberus at last. You are the knight of the Grimori clan. A holy sword like Escalibur is nothing to you. Kiba just nodded at his master's words. I guess my time to get serious has come as well. Xenobia commented, throwing the Escalibur shard at Kiba's feet, then taking out Durandal through a magic circle. That sword. Galilei yelled, taking a step back. Durandal. Kokabil wondered with a smile. Interesting. He concluded, starting to get bored of blocking all of Issei's punches. Are you seriously going to use Durandal? Irina asked, dealing with the Cerberus with a bit of difficulty. It's better for me, so you end that fight quickly and help me finish off this rude dog. She concluded, dodging the bite of all three heads in one leap. Seeing this, Rias and the rest of hers decided to help her to finish off the less important enemies quickly. Kiba looked at the Escalibur shard seriously, then gave a slightly evil smile. Him breaking her into a thousand pieces with his sword. That. Freed yelled with great exaggeration, jumping back. There's one, he would say to himself, fixing his gaze on Freed. The deranged exorcist would look at him with great rage, pointing his sword at him. Remember that your opponents are two. Xenobia commented, joining Kiba. Damn, Freed whispered seriously, then smiled his psychopathic smile as usual. It cuts them into a thousand little pieces. I'm starting to get bored. Kokobiel exclaimed with great impatience, grabbing Issei's face with great force, making the brown-haired man cry out in pain. I can't believe that such an interesting guy was being the most boring in my last battle before the second war started. Kokobiel threw him with great force to the ground. Issei clutched his head as she got up off the floor, watching as Kokobiel slowly approached him with a disgusted look on her face. What the hell are you doing, Hyodo Issei? Zenobia yelled cornering Freed with great ease thanks to his skill and sword. Use Balance Breaker once and for all. Balance Breaker. Kokobiel wondered with wide eyes. So, if you can be much stronger, the Kadri broke into a huge smile. I see. Don't you plan to use it? Kokobiel disappeared from Issei's sight, making the brunette blink in disbelief at such speed. Shit. Am I seriously going to die for a fucking reincarnated devil and a whore? Freed yelled with great rage, being completely cornered by the two swordsmen. Just as Zenobia and Kiba jumped in to finish him off, the guy disappeared without a trace. That, Irina and those of the nobility of Rias shouted when they saw that the Cerberus had disappeared. If you don't plan to use it, I guess I have no choice but to force you. Kokobiel's voice made everyone look up at him, seeing how Kokobiel was flying, noting for the first time his pair of wings. The others were leaning on magic circles, waiting for the show to start. Damned. Kiba started to fly in the direction of Galilei, intending to cut him into a thousand pieces. You won't escape, Kiba. Wait. Rias shouted, but it was already too late. How naive. Kokobiel declared, raising both hands with a creepy smile on his face. When his hands reached the top, everything went into slow motion. A strong purple light completely covered the entire site. Kiba slowly widened his eyes in horror as a huge amount of purple magic circles covered the entire place. All the others reacted much the same way as the blonde, completely frozen by what they were seeing. Even the Citri nobility were completely speechless at the sight. The blinding purple glow, intensified even more, causing Kokobiel's smile to intensify even more. Before the purple glow completely blinded the place, it could be seen how Issei ran towards his companions in slow motion, while a red glow completely surrounded him. The last thing that could be seen, was Irina throwing herself on top of Zenobia to protect her. After the entire site was decorated by a purple light, Kokobiel's next words were heard. Let the second great war begin. A huge crash was followed by a large amount of dust, dirt, and debris that covered the entire barrier. The magical barrier did not take a second longer to break, 
hearing numerous screams from the Citri nobility. Having nothing to contain it, all the destruction caused by the attack dispersed even beyond the area with great rapidity due to the magnitude of the attack, resembling a second burst. The sound of the numerous explosions finally subsided, at the same time that the earth and the debris stopped advancing, falling to the ground. The consequence of that devastating attack was a huge curtain of dust that had left everyone completely blind, if they had survived such an attack. After several seconds of silence, a red aura could be distinguished from the dust and debris. They are fine, Issei yelled loudly, his figure slowly revealed itself, seeing himself with his crimson armor on, except for his helmet. Yeah, Rias declared, seeing that his friends were also in perfect condition. You arrived just in time to defend us. He finished, trying to make out something among all the dust, just like the others. Issei remained with his arms open, ready to create another barrier over his companions if necessary. Look, Asia pointed, making everyone look in the direction. Everyone widened their eyes in shock when they could see that Kuo Academy had been completely destroyed, leaving only a few pillars and rubble scattered around the place. It didn't even take a second for her to prepare the attack. Akino said what everyone was thinking, unable to believe the rate of destruction she had caused. If it hadn't been for Issei, Kaneko declared, seeing how all around her was destruction. Shit. Kiba. Issei exclaimed, widening his eyes like he couldn't. A feeling of utter tranquility invaded her body when she could make out how Kiba emerged from the rubble of Kuo Academy. He though he quickly fell to his knees on the ground, gasping for air as a host of grievous wounds graced his body. Hold. Issei shouted, with the intention of going to help him. Awesome. Kokobiel's voice made Issei stop instantly, looking in various directions. After much of the dust cleared, Issei and the others could watch as Kokobiel and his companions landed unscathed on the ground. This time it wasn't for the sword. Kokobiel crossed his arms, keeping a serious look. It's amazing that he could withstand the attack. A big sadistic smile flashed across his face, after looking at Kiba's injuries. Although he managed to survive by sheer miracle, Irina, everyone, without exception, shifted their gaze to Zenobia who was screaming inconsolably. Issei's eyes slowly widened, opting for a completely transfixed, flabbergasted expression. Her eyes sparkled, reflecting the figure of how Zenobia tightly hugged the limp and bleeding body of her friend as tears ran down her face. Zenobia's broken gaze glared at Kokobiel's neutral face with great rage. Damned. She got up carefully supporting her friend's body on the ground. God won't let you get away with it. She screamed loudly, grabbing Durandal off the ground. Who? Kokobiel asked, wiping away a hate. Do you plan for a dead being to stop my plans? Xenobia widened her eyes in shock after hearing that. What did you say? Oops. I'm not supposed to say. That. Kokobiel exclaimed, then covered his face and began to laugh out loud. But I'm starting another war so it doesn't matter anymore. God died during the first great war. Zenobia's eyes began to tremble at what she heard, slowly approaching her madness. God is dead. Rias widened her eyes as she couldn't after what she heard. It can't be. You have to be lying. Zenobia's legs started to shake. With the death of God, pure angels cannot reproduce or be created. Pure devils and pure fallen angels are rare. Right. Kokobiel commented with a gloomy look on his face. Didn't you find it weird that the three factions started recruiting humans after the Great War? That's because all three of them stooped so low. Zenobia's legs increased in trembling of hers, falling to her knees on the ground. The angels, and fallen angels who heard the news, decided to keep the secret to protect all humans who believe in God. Lie. You lie. Zenobia declared, on the verge of fainting from all the mixed emotions. That doesn't matter now, Kokobiel stated clearly annoyed. What really annoyed me, is that because of the death of the demon lord and god, everyone decided to stop the great war. Kokobiel put her hand to his chest, taking it strongly. I can't take it. I can't. I need to kill. I need another war that lasts forever. I want to quench my endless bloodlust. Kokobiel's eyes filled with uncontrollable fury. All because of the idiot boss we have, and the stupid woman who abandoned her bloodlust for killing a human girl. Fuck me. But, the prayers, days I received them, Zenobia stated, trembling all the time. Humph. A small smile appeared on Kokobiel's face. Michael is doing great. It can't be. 
Zenobia slowly turned her face to Irina's body, making her eyes go dull. You died protecting a lie. Those were her last words, as she fell completely fainted to the ground. I already understand it, Galilei exclaimed, raising both hands with a maniacal grin. That explains why the blonde brat can use a holy demonic sword. Indeed, Kokobiel agreed. It's obvious that his sword is tainted by demonic power, but it still has a small drop of holy power on it. They all seemed completely overwhelmed by the talk. Everyone but Issei. The chestnut cared little for the death of God. He still couldn't assimilate what had happened. She. She's dead. Issei continued to stare at her, his face expressionless. Why did she kill her? For fun. Wondered the chestnut. Does he dirty her spirit? Just for taste. Does this guy's taste equal life itself from her point of view? Issei slowly turned her face, fixing her gaze on her opponents. Who will be next to sat her taste? Are you listening to me? Hey. Kokobiel yelled at Issei, giving a small sigh when she saw that she didn't answer. I guess my plan to make this more fun won't do. What's the point of using your balance breaker, just to save your teammates? Kokobiel would cross his arms, completely outraged. Issei could only limit himself to watching him. His mind was not blank. His mind was completely saturated. There was a knot that needed to be broken in order for it to move. That knot was his moral. I'm tired of talking. Freed flashed a big murderous smile. It's time for me to pay you back, you fucking blonde. Rias and the others widened their eyes in horror, when they saw how Freed charged at Kiba with a huge leap at full speed, using the power of the Excalibur. Kiba tried to get up, but couldn't even materialize a sword. He could only watch as the Excalibur was a few meters from going through his head. Ellipsis. Only the end awaited him. Ellipsis. Do you think that without killing anyone you will be able to protect your loved ones? Will you protect your ethics and morals, no matter if it destroys your life? Is there any value in someone who does not value the lives of others? When the sword was about to touch Kiba's face, Issei appeared out of nowhere on top of Freed, breaking his spine with one blow and destroying his entire body with just the impact, generating a huge crater on the ground. Issei raised his face as Freed's blood soaked into his face, glaring at Kokobiel. Kokobiel raised both eyebrows at what he had witnessed. One by one, they all opened their mouths in complete shock at what they had just witnessed. He had killed him with one blow. I had killed him. That's right, the memory of the talk with Tiamat had managed to break that knot completely. End of chapter.